you are riding shotgun with the last Deadeye, bringing you another episode of Return of the Deadeye. We are in Benedict Point, southeast of Tumbleweed, in the New Austin state over on the west side of the map. We're looking to talk to Hector and get an on-the-hunt mission. When he doesn't give it to us, we will free roam, reload into another server, and talk to him again until he does give it to us. We have an odd circumstance during this session here is Hector is not going to be there. I think he's on break. Maybe he is on a lunch break or something. But that's okay because we go back into the next session and he's back off break. He doesn't give us that mission right away. It takes us 15 minutes and 34 seconds at the beginning of the video in order to get the mission from him. During that time, we make $37 and 130 XP. It's not really the best pay rate, but you can still get paid while you're free roaming trying to get the mission, as I demonstrate during this video. There's quite a few birds around the point, uh, Benedict Point area, as well as moonshine and canned meat. You should eat something every time that you load into the session. That way you won't lose weight and end up more vulnerable to damage. It's important to be overweight in this game. So make sure you eat something every load. So we're going to run in and as you can see Hector is not there. So what we're going to do is we're just going to keep free roaming and shooting birds each session until we get into a session where Hector is offering us an on the hunt mission. Once we get the on the hunt mission, we take it and then we go kill some Welcome. cougars. Welcome. We're actually going to kill two three star cougars during this hunt. We are going to have to free roam a couple times before Hector will give us the mission. So I'm going to go ahead and just play this out for a little while. I'll right. resume the voiceover when we log back into the session where Hector gives us the mission. And that will be at 10 minutes, 17 seconds into the video. Which I've put voiceover resumes at that time on the screen there. I'll see you then.
I hope you enjoyed those tunes. I put the note up on the screen there so you could skip ahead and get back to the voiceover if that's what you were looking for. I hope that wasn't too big of an inconvenience for anyone. We are now in the session where Hector is going to give us the On the Hunt mission. As you can see, while I'm playing at this point, I do not know I'm going to be getting the On the Hunt mission. But I do know I have been hunting here for a little while. I'm probably getting full on feathers. So, when I kill these birds, 
I'm putting them on my horse with the intention of going to the butcher and unloading this session. It just happens to be by chance. This is also the session that Hector hooks us up with a mission. It's a fortunate occurrence that those two things line up to be during the same session. So here we go with the condor. These are $1.50 per feather. These are a valuable bird. These and the eagle both give you $1.50 per feather. The vulture gives you only $1.20 per feather. I think the hawk also only gives you $1.20 per feather. I could be mistaken on that though. I would have to actually double check to be sure. So don't quote me on the hawk, but the other ones you can take to the bank. So this is actually the second condor. See now, after the first condor, I wasn't full. But I'm realizing right now, my inventory is going to be full. See, like, after you skin the bird, like, when you press and hold down Y to skin the bird, if you hurry up and open your satchel before you actually pick the bird up and start skinning it, then it will get you into your satchel so you can inspect and see how many feathers you have while you're going through the skinning process. That will save you a couple moments of time and increase your efficiency while hunting. If you hold down Y and wait too long, it won't let you do it. But if you do it right away, you can get into your satchel while you're skinning. Everything will be grayed out so you can't like eat food or something while you're skinning. But you can examine your inventory to see how many feathers you have. So now that I know I'm full on condor feathers, I'm planning on making a trip to the butcher, as I already mentioned earlier, but I'm going to definitely want to check with Hector before I make that trip out there. Because if by chance he does have the mission for me, then Tumbleweed is more or less on the way to what I have planned to do during that mission. So I'm not going to want to run to the butcher without checking with Hector first. And then if Hector does not give me the mission, I would go up to the butcher and then I would reload in Tumbleweed. So that as I'm leaving Tumbleweed coming back down to Hector, I will be on a fresh server. And this way it will increase the likelihood of me seeing some birds when I get down here. It will also increase the likelihood of me seeing birds out in the sky as I'm coming down here. So I think this is going to be the last bird I get before I go talk to Hector. Now you might have noticed that I just had a stable upkeep fee there, I think it was. Now I, in my early, early videos, made mistakes and calculations in some of those videos by not taking that into account. But since then, I have been uh, coming to the conclusion on the earnings per hour with a better method, which avoids that stable upkeep coming into play. Because I don't want to include those negative costs in our numbers because that's not a hunt specific cost so just so you're aware I have taken necessary precaution in order to avoid stable upkeep and camp upkeep becoming a factor in our earnings per hour once again, I come into this shack and get the moonshine and the canned meat. It looks like I'm full on moonshine now. In general, if I'm full on moonshine, that means I haven't PvP'd in a little while. Or the PvP I have done is just oh, yeah. one-shotting somebody with the rifle and then running Here on and leaving them alone. I if I get into a big fight where I can kill well, somebody over I'm and over again, I usually try and use my incendiary. Somewhere in buckshot 
as so much as possible because together, I do this method it, here and I, and I get free moonshine. So it's easier to just How's keep picking sound? up moonshine okay. while I'm trying to get the Hector Omar mission than it is to go out and hunt animal fat to craft explosive ammo. Tactic that I added on to doing this Hector mission, which makes it even better for someone with the incendiary buckshot pamphlet. So now, as you saw, I talked to Hector, he had, on the hunt mission, and he's giving us the wolf mission, which is the wolf right over here west of Benedict Point. We are about to enter the mission area, and as we enter it, this vulture, which is a mission-spawned animal, it only will spawn by the mission because it doesn't have any stars on it, you can tell. So, I'm going to take it down and go skin it. And once we enter that mission area, you saw a mission timer start at the top of the screen it's counting down 1940 it says now that timer we want to say 30 seconds or less when we complete this mission that's how you get the maximum payout is you want the timer to go red and it's counting down below 30 seconds or directly at 30 seconds not 31 seconds so you're, you need to go red and do 30 seconds or less so we have 18 minutes and 45 seconds to kill well it would be just terrible to go take and get the mission wolf and have to wait 18 minutes to go turn it in so the objective here is to earn as much cash as possible while waiting for this timer to go down yesterday I managed to bag three cougars during this period and I had started capturing the str the video prior to hunting but I don't know five minutes before the mission was over I looked over and my capturing PC had froze up so I didn't get the footage for that hunt totally bumming about that but anyways I'm gonna get that one day for you guys and it's gonna be great but this hunt, you can see that I was full with quite a few things right there. I also have a wanted level now. I bumped into somebody in Tumbleweed with my horse. But being full with all that stuff, and I just sold it to the butcher, that took time. Okay, so that cost me a little bit of time on the clock. And also getting wanted, that's going to cost me a little time too. Because before I shoot this cougar I'm about to go kill, I'm going to sit there and wait for this wanted to go away. Because I'm outside the red area, and I'm losing my wanted level, if I fire my gun again, chances are pretty likely that it will move that red circle back over top of me and restart the timer all over. So I have, I'm have i losing a little bit of time at the beginning of this hunt, which prevents me from feeling comfortable with going after a third cougar. So I didn't even attempt the third cougar on this hunt, unfortunately. But I did manage to bag two three-star cougars. So during the mission, we did really good at earnings per hour. With 0.69 gold bar, $264.51, and 1921 XP per hour during the 20 minutes and 46 seconds that we spent working on this mission. If I would have been able to bag another three-star cougar during that period, then I haven't done the math on it yet, but we would have done really well as far as earnings per hour during the mission period. As you can see, prior to the mission period, I only earned $37 in 15 minutes and 34 seconds. So that's a really weak earning rate of $142 and 500 XP per hour. But it's a necessary evil to go through that lower earning spell if you want to keep earning gold per hour. You know, you've, that's that's just what you have to do in order to free roam and get Hector to cough up those missions quicker. And in the end, it gives me 0.40 gold per hour. 
$212 per hour and $1,313 XP per hour. I'm not real happy about the money and XP per hour, but if you're focusing on earning gold, then that's just got to be the way to do it. I mean, other side of that is maybe you could go do PvP matches. What do they pay? 0 .04 gold? So you'd have to do 10 PvP matches per hour. That's one every six minutes to earn that rate. That seems kind of rough to me. I'd rather do this, this hunt inside free roam, personally. I get that the PvP matches, a lot of people like it. That's just not my cup of tea. This is what I'd rather do. And I'm just putting it out there as an option for you to do it too. So, if you have any... Oh, here we go. I'm going to run up to this spot here. This is fortunate too. Because it's daylight, we can come up and find birds at this location up here. And you can see there is a hawk on top of the roof and then I'm coming around looking before I fire because I don't want to scare anything else away if it's here. There's another hawk over on top of that post. There, there's as many as eight spawn locations that I've seen for either a hawk, a condor, or a vulture in this area. So I've seen as many as four birds spawned at once in this area and I've taken down as many as three at once. So this is a really good spot after you do a cougar hunt to come up and fill those other two spots on your horse with birds you can also pluck some feathers that's a nice addition to this cougar hunt so that's a nice little tip if you haven't seen this spot before there's also three different types of horse tonics there's a horse medicine uh, horse Stimulant and Horse Revive. And each of those, there's three of. So there's actually nine horse tonics that you can pick up right in that spot, as well as two packages of classic oat cakes. So you can pick up 11 items for horses every time you run up to that spot. It, then, right where I'm at right now, just south of that train track, if you leave that spot and you run down south of the track where I was just at and you turn around and you go back up to that spot, then all those tonics will respawn. So you can run back and forth and pick up 11 items over and over and over without having to free roam and just fill your inventory up on horse tonics and oat cakes. And while you're doing it, those birds have a chance at respawning too. So every time you run up there, you can get feathers as well as tonics. It's a really great spot if you don't have horse tonics to fill up on them. It is important to note, though, that those birds only spawn during daylight hours when it's not raining. So it's got to be sunny out for you to find those birds in that location. Now there's something I realized during this run. I hadn't realized it yet at this point. It's after bagging the second cougar that I realized when I was selling to the butcher right now, I wasted time by selling anything that I wasn't going to be full on. So like the cougar teeth, the big game meat, uh, the cougar hide itself. You know, things that I could still stack for sure, I didn't need to sell there, and I would be saving a couple seconds time. So if we're going to be like speed running this and figuring out the absolute best way to profit, it might be like a four cougar run. And in order to get four cougars, we might have to squeeze out every single second. And you know, I mean, like, you, if, if you manage to pull this off with like an Arabian, you might be able to do like a five cougar run. I don't I don't know where the limit is. And I'm probably not going to end up being the person that achieves it. If this ever becomes a thing like trying to speed run, then I'm sure there's someone out there that's going to be able to do way better than I am. Because I'm always tripping over stuff with my horse.
in a couple minutes, well, see, look, right, perfect example right there. I'm laying on my back. In a speed run, the perfect scenario, that never happens. So, I mean, like, this is like a clown running around with a gun compared to someone who's like a professional speed runner. Those people take it to the next level. You know, they want every frame to be perfect. I'm amazed at some of the stuff I've seen on YouTube is about speed running, like the original Mario Brothers and how they figure out all the dynamic dynamics in the game and the mechanics. It's just it's incredible. So I don't want to, you know, make the wrong impression here. I'm not going to be the one that's going to ever get this perfect. But if somebody does, you know, they're going to have to figure out all the intricacies. And I can take part in helping figure some of that out. That's what I'm doing right now. That's what we're all doing. So, you know, in, in my small little contribution, I'll, I'll play a part. As will perhaps you. And again, I'm losing time. On my back. Picking carcasses up. Putting them back on the horse. I think I actually end up dropping this carcass a second time too before we make it to the butcher if I recall properly I, I'm not sure but I am just a klutz on the horse sometimes I rely too heavily on the horse steering itself I think where sometimes I'm just like in go mode just spam A as fast as you can and don't even care what's coming that's part of the problem, I think. So now we're coming over here, and we had two hawks last time. And this time it looks like... Is that two condor? When we get a sight on them, we'll see. It's either two condor or two vulture. I think the vultures are smaller, though. Is this condor? I think it is. Pretty sure these are condor. Let's get the reticle on them and find out. Oh, that's a turkey vulture. Okay. So that's only a dollar twenty per feather for the vultures. That's a condor, and I have to shoot it twice. So there's a three dollar loss right there, and actually perhaps even more because it probably wasn't a one star. And I think we're selling this butcher to the carcass, so it could have been more like a five dollar loss if this was a three star bird. I just turned into a one star. I lose two condor feathers. I lose two flight feathers. And I lose the difference between a one star and however many stars it was. So that's uh, inefficient. If we're talking about speed run, that's something that you wouldn't have happen on a speed run. I, I, can you even really call these speed runnable though? With the variable of something spawning or not. And when it does spawn, being a one, two, or three star critter. The perfect speed run you know, would have to be everything three stars coming in with two condors or two hawks or whatever, whatever the most profitable animal is every time. And that would be more coming down to luck than skill, I would think. I mean, you would have to make this run so many times just to get the perfect animals on the perfect run. I don't know. What do you think down in the comments? Is this something that's, you know, fun to just kind of like push yourself on a speed run, see how much money you can make in the 20 minutes and 30 or 20 minutes and 45 seconds that it takes to do this mission? I enjoy it. I'm having a good time running these missions. I, at this point, I really don't even have ambitions to buy anything. Most of the stuff I want in game, I already have. I just enjoy playing, running around hunting stuff. The PvP, that is a lot of fun too. Oh man, that just like sucks up so many resources PvPing that you just find yourself back farming stuff a little bit later. This is just a collection of wealth. Making gold, making money, making XP, leveling up, getting treasure maps. Oh, I have a treasure map for Benedict Point, which I kind of like don't even want to use it. I just got it at level 145. I don't know why, but it just feels like kind of a keepsake kind of thing. I spend so much time hunting in that area 
having the treasure map, knowing that like I can spawn treasure in that spot, it just kind of tickles me a little bit. I should just like always have it spawn there when I'm hunting, just like every time I open the game, open the map, and then there's just always going to be some treasure around but never pick it up. And then it's just part of the videos. Like anytime I happen to come across that spot, there's a treasure sitting for me to pick up, but I just never pick it up. So we've sold both of our cougars, and we don't have enough time. Well, we might have enough time, but I'm not willing to risk going for another cougar. And when I made the three cougar run yesterday, it was nighttime. I was not getting birds. Birds are also taking up time on this run, which is profitable time. Those birds are valuable. You know, one bird, let's just say even the cheap one, that's a dollar twenty a feather. You're looking at three sixty for the feathers, then another forty five cents for the flight feathers, so four oh five. And the carcasses, I don't know, what are they? Depends on the bird. Let's just go on the low end. Let's just call it two dollars and fifty cents. You're at six fifty five. And the meat is twenty-five cents, I believe. So you're at six eighty for one of those carcasses. You pick up two of them, and you're looking at thirteen sixty. So that's more than half of a cougar. If I can go pick up birds twice versus a cougar once then that $13.60 is $27.20 compared to the, what, $21.25 or $21.50 that you get for a cougar. So giving up that third cougar is worth doing if you can replace it with four birds during the hunt for the first two cougars. I hope that makes sense to you. If not, you know, leave a comment down below and I can respond and try and explain it a little more with math or words so it's like written down and you don't have to just comprehend speech. Maybe that will help make it understandable as well. Otherwise, leave comments for any other reasons too if you have any other questions about this hunt so right now I'm looking for a stranger's horse so I wanted to pick up one of those other wolf carcasses and take it over to Benedict Point and try and keep it for after the mission but I can't find another stranger's horse right now I did do that the yesterday but the video I, I was not recording when I started the mission, so I never recorded any of that hunt. And it was weird because the stranger's horse disappeared, but the carcasses remained. So they'd fallen off and the horse was gone. Now where I hitched it was in between the shack where I get the moonshine and Hector. There's a hitch post there. And it's kind of like where you have to drop the wolf off to. I think it's inside the yellow circle. So what I'm going to do next time is I'm going to try hitching it north of the post office at Benedict Point. I think there's hitch points on the north side of that building as well. So if I hitch it away from where the mission point is, so it's not actually in the yellow circle, I'm going to see if it behaves the same way as at McFarland's Ranch. So we'll be testing that in a future episode. Unfortunately, this episode, I do not find that stranger horse. And we're down to a minute and 20 seconds, so I give up. I'm heading back to get our gold. We'll tally everything up. And we already know the numbers because we're watching a rerun, so to speak. This is not a live video, so I was able to put the numbers up on the screen. As you can see, we've already discussed it. I do appreciate you coming in. Thank you for your view. If you have not subscribed yet, hit that subscribe button. Catch future videos. 
Go check out my channel, see some other videos I have. I have some tutorials, some guides. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up, will you? I'd appreciate that. And I guess until next time, happy hunting, and I'll see you then.